thank you so much for being here. I saw this story, I read the story, and I immediately called my producers and said, please find this woman, please book her. Your story, first of all, I admire everything you do and everything you stand for, so thank you for that. Vice please, versa. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Tell everybody this story of this whale. Okay, we were making a film, um, and the director said, we need some more footage of you underwater. And I said, okay, no problem, there are a couple whales right there. And so I got in the water, and I've been studying whales for a long time. And I usually just let the whales approach me, but I started swimming a little bit, and the whale approached me, but he didn't stop. So I put my hand out, and I was sort of a little nervous that he was coming too fast, but he ran in, into my hand, and I couldn't push 50,000 pounds away. So I knew that I could push myself away from him, and so that's what I was doing. But the next thing I know, I'm sitting on his head. And this was a little uncomfortable, <laughs> a little panic. And he rolls over, and I'm sitting on his chin, and then he's trying to tuck me under his pectoral fin, and I'm sliding down his back. And there was another whale there that was tail slapping. And next to it was what looked like a smaller whale, and it was swimming towards me, but then I noticed that its tail was going side to side instead of up and down. And I thought, oh, God, that's a shark. Oh, it's a tiger shark. It's the biggest tiger shark I've ever seen. And it's coming right for me. Its pectoral fins are down. And I'm thinking, oh, OK, this is attack mode. So then my heart really starts to panic. And the whale just comes right up underneath me, puts me on his head, and pushes me right back to the boat. And then I get on the back of the boat. And then I'm just in a state of shock. Right. <laughs> so. The fact that that whale knew, and like you said, the tiger, it was like 14 feet or something like that. It was, I guess it was about 15, but the fisherman told me it's about 18. 18 feet. And those are the most dangerous man-eating sharks there are, tiger sharks. So this whale knew that you were in danger yes. and tried to, to save you. Um, that's a life-changing experience. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing is that you know, we, we know that humpback whales have altruistic behavior. They will help their own species and other whales and even other species like seals, and they protect them from killer whales and from danger, and it's this selfless act. It's an act where you will risk your life, like a fireman might do running into a house on fire to save people he doesn't even know, but you, you don't expect anything in return. Yeah, that's, that's amazing that they're altruistic. I mean, are, are dolphins the same way? Yeah. That's, it's incredible how smart they are. So uh, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. So four days later, you see the same. What, what happens four days later? Well, four days later, I'm in the boat doing my research, and a couple of whales are spy hopping next to the boat. And I'm like, why are they so close? And then I recognize one of them as being the second whale that was there that had been tail slapping. Yep. That one, the big one. <laughs> and she, it's just like this invitation to get in the water. So I slide over the side, and you can see she just comes up right underneath me, puts her pectoral fins around me, and it's my birthday. And she gave me a whale hug. And you know, being a scientist, I'm very careful that I'm not considered a whale hugger, even though I am. <laughs> um, <laughs> But here I am getting a hug from a whale. So, <laughs> on your birthday. On my birthday. Uh, all right. So, yeah. so we have to take a break, but we, I want to talk about what she's doing with satellite tagging and, and what we've learned about whales and how you can help uh, protect them and save them. And when she saw that whale a year later, which is crazy. We'll be back. We're back with whale biologist Nan Hauser. She was reminding me that I speak whale because I was Dory, so maybe that's why I love this story so much. OK, so when you're in the water, because I know that they communicate through these, as I speak whale, woo. Uh, so can you, I, it's, it seems like, because um, I've heard about dolphins being able to tell if someone has cancer or some kind of disease, yep. and, and, and they, they let you know. Whales and dolphins both can tell then energies from a person? Absolutely. I mean, that's pretty much how they communicate. Um, they know. They just know. And that's why I think I've had such amazing results in my research is because I just love them so unconditionally. And I'm, I want to know the science. It's as if the, the mystery, every time you get a little piece of that mystery, it's a gift. 
Yeah, because we don't fully understand them. We're just no. starting to learn all this that behavior, thanks to you. So uh, satellite tagging is important because, mm -hmm. uh, tell me why that's critical and what you're learning. Well, we've learned that they have these patterns and they're, they're deeply patterned migrations. And so when they travel, they follow a linear constant course segment and they don't even deviate by a degree. And this can be thousands of kilometers. And it all has to do with this Oh, where, where the Earth is in comparison to the sun and the moon. And remember, 23.439 is the tilt of the axis of the Earth. Well, they use that angle to turn the 23.439 degrees and multiples of that. It's all mathematical and it's all celestial. It's unreal. It gives me goosebumps. Me, me too. That. To think that they know that and under, that is just mm. intelligence that it's funny what we call intelligence, you know, because yes. we, we couldn't do that, you know, for a million dollars. Right. But the beauty of this is that then we, we can predict where they're going to be and when they're going to be there. And this is incredible for conservation initiatives. Yeah, it's, 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 it's also important to get those giant nets out the way because that's, exactly. we, they also know where they're going. Oh, and there's so many. And we can then tell the fishermen, or put it through legislation, they can't set their nets in the migratory pathway. Yeah. Um, OK, so a year later. A year later, a year and 15 days later, I'm in my boat down at the southern part of Rarotonga. And I get this call from a fisherman that there's a whale up near the harbor. And I go up. And I see it dive, and I think, wow, there are two little notches in the tail. That looks familiar. And then the whale comes right up to the side of the boat, and he stares at me. He's just got that wide eye again. He's looking at me, and I notice a scar on his head, and I know that scar, and I scream, oh, he's back, he's back. And I slip over the side of the boat, and I get in the water, and he looks at me, and he nuzzles me with his head, and he's just, it's like, hi, how are you? But he's so big, where do you hug him? <laughs> so he actually puts his pectoral fin underneath me, and I'm laying on his pectoral fin, and my mask is filling with tears because I'm crying, and I just can't believe it. It's this beautiful reunion. He recognized me, and I have no idea how that happens. And I'm almost scared to say it as a scientist, but it happened. Yeah, you know? I mean, for a whale to recognize you a year later mm. is, it's, it's amazing. Again, we don't know how uh, intelligent these creatures are and how much we need to pay attention and save them because who knows what we could learn from them. Exactly. Uh, I, Shutterfly cares about supporting organizations like yours, so we're going to give you a check for $20,000 from no. Shutterfly no. to help you continue to do this. Oh, my gosh, no way. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you want to donate and learn more about Nan's whale research, please go to our website and get involved. We need to save these magnificent creatures. We'll be back.